All right, so in this one, I want to go over the top five most underwhelming units that have dropped in Legends, in all of Legends, right? Uh, this list obviously can vary from when you started playing the game to now, like if you just start playing it this anniversary, last anniversary, first anniversary, or when the beta dropped for this game. But this is just my top five from my experiences of PvP in the last three years, because, you know, third anniversary, second anniversary, first anniversary, three years I've been playing. It's just my experience, right? So, underwhelming. Underwhelming means a unit that you expected to be good that turned out to be bad. So, let's say, um, I don't know, Boo Tanks. He wouldn't be c classified as underwhelming, right? Because you didn't ever expect him to be great. It's like, oh, Boo Tanks? Like, who the fuck cares about Boo Tanks, right? So, that's what we're going to go off of when we go through this list. Um, by the way, I am thinking about making a tier list video of everything since third anniversary is over, uh, I did say I would do that, but let me know if you guys want to see that. I could obviously do it. It'd be about as long as the other sparking tier list that I have up. That is, what, an hour and 40 minutes long? Probably a little bit longer because I go more in depth. But yeah, if you guys want to see that, let me know. Um, to go in, not really in order uh, to begin with, honestly. Just more sporadic and then the last two units will most likely be the most underwhelming units that everyone can agree on. Just to go through it though, uh, let me guys think of who could be in this list. Uh, my opinion may differ from yours, again, uh, considering when you played, when you started, all this, yada yada yada. Let's go through it. The 5 through 3 aren't really in order, right? So, Trunks and Mai. You think of Trunks and Mai, you think maybe in Dokkan, they have a decent unit. Uh, they have a couple decent units in Dokkan, actually. Uh, you think they're like the, you know, main plot of the future arc really decent characters. I don't think they're good characters in Dragon Ball Super, but decent characters enough. Um, obviously, Trunks, we all know. My, you know, from Dragon Ball, and then, you know, from Super, and even a little bit of, uh, was she in GT? I think she was in GT a little bit. I'm not sure. Uh, but nonetheless, you expected this unit to be good because it's a future unit, and at the time, future was getting buffed out the ass, right? And then you see this guy, and you're like, holy shit! He could be the red unit Vegeta family needs that could support, that could, uh, you know, cover everything that they need. He could do literally anything. He could be great. And then you got him, and it's like, firstly, he's strike-based. Vegeta family wants blast-based. Uh, hybrids wants blast-based. The future wants blast-based. And girls, sure, they want strike-based, but you're not going to run this guy on girls. Well, this guy and girl on girls. You're not going to do that. Z ability, strike attack, and defense for future Vegeta family. Again, blast-based team. Um, he just isn't good. 20% of damage flick against tag regen or android cannot be cancelled. Awesome. Applies flying attacks to self when this character enters the battlefield. Draw a special arts card next. Uh, activates once, then gets card draw speed 15 counts. Then every time he uses a striker blast, he's buffing future or Vegeta family. Just like the purple Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. But the difference is this guy doesn't have death buffs. Purple Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta is removing three of their balls. Increasing your health on, I believe, Vegeta family or future units when he dies and giving you damage inflicted that's uncancelable. There's no death buffs. Nothing. Uh, if you got this guy, you weren't going to run him, right? You have so many better options on future on Vegeta family. With Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, even without his Enkai was probably a better option at that point. I'm sure there's better options. I just can't think off the top of my head. But the thing is... It's strike base. That is probably the most glaring issue for this Trunks. Uh, blue card, no blast armor on it. <laughs> wow. Then his ultimate. This is a joke, right? They, they made his ultimate a joke. Like, compared to every other ultimate that does the similar notion of this. <sighs> Applies the following effects to self on a hit. Joran's ally tag future of Vegeta family sub count by 5. Restores own vantage gauge by 100%. Why is this a joke? Super Saiyan Blue Goku, that gets Vanish back, gets it by popping his main. Okay. Bardock, who gets Vanish back, gets it by popping the card. The ultimate card, right? So he doesn't have to land it. He just has to pop it. This Trunks has worse than both of those. And he came out later. This guy has to hit them to get his Vanish back. Not just land it. I mean, not just pop it. He has to land it. Not just pop the main. Not just pop the card, he has to land the card. You have to get something mid-combo while you have no vanish to get this guy to get his vanish back. 
and get the sub countdown, which is very good if you can, you know, pull it off. But you look at his stats, you look at his defenses, there is a legitimately zero desirable things about this Trunks in my unit. It is one of the worst designed units in recent history and is more or less a joke. And, you know, I could just dog on LF Super Saiyan 4 Goku. He probably will be at the top of the list, but, you know, we won't dog on him for now. Uh, Trunks and Mai just are absolute cream pies of jokes. Now, I I'm hesitant, right? I want to include this Vegeta, but I don't think people were ever, like, expecting him to be very good. So I'm going to say he's, like, a sixth option. You could put him on the list. But, again, you never expected him to be, like, a god-tier unit. Same thing with, like, Yellow Turles. You think of the character, you're thinking, like, okay, well, Trunks and Mai should be, like, goaded, right? If I look at Green Raditz, I'm not gonna be like, okay, Green Raditz is gonna be the best unit in the game. That's not how that works. But this motherfucker! Oh, God! Wow! I understand on release he was a good tank. But even on release, man, you gotta get hit 87,000 times. Like, truly, you gotta get hit so much for this guy to do any damage. With this character on the battlefield, applies one effect to self every time the enemy uses Striker Blast Arts caught or Blast Arts. Plus 25% damage inflicted 20 time accounts and reduced damage by 10% for 5 time accounts. The problem with this is, because it's innately in itself, it's not a bad thing. He has 15% cut, and he increases their card cost. So you have an issue where, okay, maybe you'll get 50%, right? They'll uh, do a card, then they'll have one more card. Then that'll be 50% to damage inflicted. Okay, cool. And then, uh, when enemy, um, uh, wait, the following effects occur when this character evades enemy, so when he sidesteps, so he'd get what? 75% to damage afflicted. That, that's it? That's it? That's all I'm getting? 75%? I don't get anything on main? That, legitimately, that's it, because they're not going to do more than two cards, unless you're running against a unit that's, like, immune to card cost up, but then if you run into that, why would you even bring this Super Saiyan God Goku? It wouldn't make sense! He wouldn't do anything, because you want to, uh, disrupt them. But with you disrupting them, you're fucking over your dam- I, What? You screw your damage by covering in with the unit who wants to take more cards. If he had 70% cut and he was a juggernaut and he had the juggernaut stats to back it up. Because these stats aren't terrible. He's 13 star. They're not terrible for defenses. But he has 15% cut and he's increasing their cost. Increase their cost by 10 then, not 25, so where you can actually get your unique built up and get 100%, 200%, 300% damage inflicted. He doesn't, there's no unit that's going to hit, well now there is with Super Saiyan 3 Goku, that's going to hit so weak, that's going to like warrant this, right? And Super Saiyan 3 Goku is an exception because he's meant, I guess, just to form Rising Rush, build Rising Rush up, I don't know what he's meant for. I just think he's meant to be tedious and he worked well um well this guy would work well against him because that guy's not gonna do much damage this guy's a little bit of cut then he's gonna get all his damage inflicted i think this guy's ass in design on release he was never too great you would never be scared of him right you would never be like oh my god super saiyan god goku's gonna one combo me firstly lf beer still existed firstly or secondly lf beers with just four blast starts he's dead he's a defensive unit who cares it doesn't matter now, I'm pretty sure Beers, at a certain extent, could become immune to his uh, card cost up. So, what does that really matter, right? Uh, number three here, obviously Super Saiyan God Goku is number four. Transforming Frieza. Now, I never liked this guy, right? Uh, his banner was the Purple Cooler and Transforming Frieza. Obviously, the Purple Cooler is a juggernaut. Um, he can be a great last man stand unit. And a decent, movie, a decent unit for movies. This Frieza, I never was scared, and I honestly always pitied myself when I ran him in PvP. Um, Z ability is cool, whatever. You know, single buff isn't great, but it's to LOE and Frieza Force. And Super Saiyan God Goku, his Z ability was uh, God Key double defense, so it wasn't the worst thing. It's just, you know, you don't really need all that. This Frieza, he never stood out as a problem to me, right? You can just look here. He's not going to get much damage inflicted. He's not going to do much. And he has a limited uh, transformation that's 60 count, or 40 count, 60 counts, one of those two, for when he does go golden. 15% of damage inflicted for 10 timer counts when faced with enemy Goku. When this character enters the battlefield, the following effects occur, uh, are applied to self if a tag LOE or freeze force on this character as a battle member. 50% strike damage inflicted for 20 timer counts, 
and 40% secure recovery for 20 timer counts. Then, applies flying effects to ally tag LOE or Freeze of Force, so he supports them. 20% um, to tag to damage inflicted against tag Saiyan for 15 timer counts, plus 20% to damage inflicted, um, strike damage inflicted for 20 timer counts. Then, when his transformation ends, reduce damage by 20% plus 30% to damage inflicted against tag Goku or character Goku. Then reduce his own key by 100 when transformation ends. The problem is. His stats aren't even that crazy. You see it, like 286, that's great. Um, but what is he getting? Well, let's look, 25% maximum. This is maximum stats he's getting. 40%, 90%, 110, 130. Okay, he can get 130. Now let's take off the Saiyan stuff because when this guy was run, you weren't facing off against Saiyans. Uh, you were facing off against other LOE members, movies, regen. Uh, Saiyans really wasn't like meta at this time, honestly. So let's take off that. You would get 50% if you have strike damage only. If you had LOE or Freezer Force, which you could run this guy in movies, but you know, let's for sake of it, say you had LOE. Then you take off that, it'd be 70%. Cool. His damage goes down to half, basically. And it's only strike damage. Now the problem, it's a grueling one. This guy isn't great. Um, <laughs> you have Purple Cooler who holds a strike and a blast. You get the problem? If this guy draws a blast, you see he holds double strikes, that's great. If he draws a blast, what's gonna happen? This stat stuff oh, won't matter. He will do peanuts. His strike does peanuts. His green doesn't even do that much. That's great, it changed strike, a blast strike, but he should have such restrictive buffs. This guy never scared me. I was always more scared of Purple Cooler because his tanking, even with his lower stats, technically. His tanking, his damage inflicted buffs he could get actually were overall damage inflicted, not just strike, 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 strike. Because if you draw a blast, guess what? You're fucked. You're not going to guarantee draw a green card with this Frieza. Be like, okay, I don't care about drawing blast. No, you're going to draw a blast and you're going to do negative damage. Then, if you look at him before transforming, it is, <laughs> yeah, huh. He has the stats of Super Saiyan 3 Goku, and a transforming unit typically has God tier stats, right? Um, he just wasn't too great. Why do I think you can run on movies? I'm an idiot. Uh, disregard that. Green card is cool. Uh, restores own health by 10%. I don't know why when he transforms, he doesn't heal on green card. Just doesn't make sense at all. They legitimately nerf him when he transforms because he can't heal there. But nonetheless, this guy is pretty ass uh, obviously he's ass nowadays but on um, release he was never just a foe you were scared of now number two <laughs> i think number two and number one are very close um we know who you know is in discussion but just to look through before we go into it fully um yeah i don't think anyone else really contends with these two units mm, again i didn't necessarily play as heavily um when the game first came out because i didn't have the game I just saw gameplay of it. Yeah, there's no other sparking that I'm like, yeah, there's there's no other sparking that even matches these two. Uh, let me know, you guys. Think um, if you haven't already, who number two, number one is. Uh, I think it's pretty apparent who number one it could be. But yeah, and Red Pycon, just go over him. He's not bad. He just came out in a shitty meta. I can't say more. He he just came out at a bad time. He's really not that bad. Like compared to number two, number one. Okay, I want to say this guy is number two or number one. I, I think... Yeah, yeah, he, he's number one. Uh, number two will be Super Saiyan 4 Goku, which is sad because he is a modern unit compared to everyone else. You know, Trunks and Mai are pretty modern, but compared to this guy, he's really modern. He's like three or four months old at this point. Um, he does nothing. He takes way too long to get all his stuff going because obviously applies full effects itself every time an enemy uses Strike Blast. Blue card, and when this character is on the battlefield or on standby, essentially he waits for them to do 10 cards to get his full damage. Okay, well within 10 cards, someone's gonna die. It's gonna be this guy, it's gonna be someone else, it's gonna be your units are very low. Someone's gonna die within 10 cards, right? So he's taking way too long to get his full damage, and any unit that relies on the opponent to do things is a bad unit. Well, not innately, but it makes them a worse unit. For example, LF Broly. Um, I do not think he's necessarily great because you rely on your opponent to make this mistake of swapping, to make this mistake 
of not realizing he nullifies special cover change when he pops his main. Uh, to make all these mistakes, then he begin he gets better and better and better. That's not necessarily the unit being good, it's more your opponent making the mistake and that in turn helps your unit become better. Units like Future Gohan, Revival Gohan, don't rely on your opponents to make mistakes more than that they're just raw good units, right? This Goku has the same effect. Um, with your opponents doing more and more and more, he's not necessarily being good because he takes too long and he's not doing anything from himself. He's not going to build up from himself. What's he going to get here, right? Nothing. Um, when it's someone's dead, he's going to heal, get damage inflicted, damage inflicted. That's great, but you want this guy dead. You're not going to sack off your LF Super Saiyan 3 Goku for a 6-star Super Saiyan 4 Goku. You're not going to sack off your Namek Goku, your LF Gohan, your Purple Super Saiyan 3 for this guy. No, but yet he wants someone dead. That That's terrible design. He takes too long, in a very fast meta of Zen Kaisen PvP, how they are now. And then, on top of that, he wants someone to die as if he's not the one you would want to die, right? Z ability, strike, attack, and defense, which is whatever. And then, again, he can heal multiple times. He can heal, what, 50%? Because he has 10%, 10% because if two allies are dead. And 30%? He can heal half his health back. He's just not tanky. Um, he's super squishy. These stats are abhorrently low, even for an LF unit. He just doesn't deserve to even be classified as an LF, honestly. I am sad he is how he is, because that scene was actually cool, and they disrespected the fuck out of him. Now, the last unit. <laughs> yeah, you. And I, we, I saw Red Kid Boo right here. I just want to talk about him for a second before we actually go into Vegeta. And Tapion. And DBS Bardock, I guess. Jesus Christ, there's a lot of bad units. Um, again, it was more just... They weren't the best for their teams. Uh, Tapion, obviously, just wasn't the best for movies because movies already had that trio. Bardock, same thing, just wasn't the best. He actually ran him on Saiyans if you wanted to run Saiyans. And then Red Kid Boo, he was good for his team. It's just that he wasn't crazy for his team, right? So, just to discuss all those, this Vegeta's ass. <laughs> Z ability, firstly, is pretty shit. Um, just one stat buff to purple or red, which, you know, single stat buff buffers aren't really a thing nowadays, so having that is pretty shit. On release, this guy was the worst to come out of the three or four units. I think he came out with Mystic, or Ultimate Gohan, I don't know why I said Mystic. Uh, red Super Saiyan 3 Goku, who actually does decent damage, at least for the beginning of the battle. And I think he came out with somebody else. It was Gohan, this Vegeta, Super Saiyan 3 Goku, I can't think of who else came out. Who else? I'm not going to go check because it's not in order for me, but let me know who came out with this guy. I know it was four units. It was four Sparkings that came out on one banner. I think it was a little bit, like a few months before anniversary. But yeah, uh, this guy <laughs> restores his own health by 20% plus 80% since the next special move damage inflicted cannot be canceled. Okay. You'll pay for this when two allies are dead. Restores his own health by 50%. Draw a blue card next and key by 60 or draw a green card next, key by 60, then plus 70% damage inflicted for his strikes, cannot be cancelled, just kidding, it can, oh well, that sucks, <laughs> reduce the C by 50% for 10 time accounts, 10 counts, for him being a last man standing, he's getting 70% in reduction of 10 counts, when this character enters the battlefield, plus 20% to own key recovery per defeated character, Bulma, yeah, Bulma, what, what Bulma are you going to run on Vegeta? Is there even a Bulma that runs on Vegeta Family? I don't even think there is. Oh, huh, that's good. Or tag Vegeta Family. Okay. Then, uh, plus 20 sets of damage inflicted by ally tag Saiyan or hybrid Saiyan for 20 time accounts when he is swapped to standby. So, wait a second. Bulma doesn't get damage inflicted, but hybrids and Saiyans do. Okay. That's good, Vegeta. Um, stats. Holy shit. He has less- wait, why does he get strike attack if he has less strike attack? Oh my god, what the hell was this massacre to this man? Wow, green card here, blast damage inflicted by allies increases based on number of defeated battle members. So he gets blast damage on his green, he gets strike on his uniques. What the hell? Then his blue does more- makes blast damage do more. What? What is this unit? Yeah, he wasn't even usable on release. Uh, this guy was complete dog shit on release. 
I mean, he hasn't aged, right? Like, he hasn't aged well. He hasn't aged at all because you would never run him anyways. He's just ass. Uh, there is no redeeming factor of him. I actually am trying to find who he came out with because, like I said, it's not an order for me because I didn't play when he dropped. I kind of just pulled him randomly. Um, I don't... I have, like... I feel like I have tip my tongue. There's Ultimate Gohan. Red Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Um, I, I'm sure someone will comment it. That's fine, but I want to know now is the problem. This guy? No, not with him. Hmm, who did he come out with? Has to be higher up, right? Apologize for Kamikolo? Did he come out with Kamikolo? What, what are their numbers? DBL 10. No, okay, never mind. Kamikolo came out way earlier. Deborah? No. Where the hell did this guy come out? Yeah, I don't know when he came out. Huh. It wasn't Purple Super Saiyan 3, obviously, because he came out Black Friday. Yeah, I don't even know when he came out. Like, who who was the fourth unit on that banner? I know it was four Sparkings on one banner. Huh. Alright. I mean, whatever. But it doesn't matter. Um, He's just the worst of the four that came out, which I'm pretty sure it was a four. Now I'm second-guessing myself at this point. But yeah, uh, let me know if you guys agree or disagree with this list, with that Vegeta being number one, uh, with, um, whatchamacallit, Super Saiyan 4 Goku number two, number five being Trunks and Mai, number four being uh, that Super Saiyan God Goku, and number three being that transforming Frieza from, uh, is he named ROF or is he named um, USS? Because I assume he is named ROF. Yeah, um, yeah, freezer. Okay, interesting because his art I don't think is from there. If I could change his art real quick, transform, Frieza, 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 transform, please. Thank you. Where is his art from? I guess that's ROF. I'm not sure. Uh, let me know what you guys think if you guys agree or disagree with this list. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.